According to so many sites and polls, Martin Scorsese's Raging Bull is one of the greatest movies ever made. But is it? If it is, what makes it great? Let's talk about that in this video coming up next. It's always surprising to me to find Martin Scorsese's Raging Bull so highly valued, so highly rated. IMDb has it as the number 144th movie ever. We think, well, it's a boxing movie, it's a Scorsese movie, maybe it ought to be a little bit higher than that. But that's still pretty darn high. It's a movie in black and white, it's an art house movie, it doesn't have a clear plot problem, it doesn't have a clear plot reveal near the end. There's no traditional climax, this is a character study, a portrait of a man. The man in this case is Jake LaMotta, an American boxer in the mid-20th century. He's played very memorably by Robert De Niro, who undergoes one of the most intense and surprising physical transformations. This is one of the first physical transformations of an actor. Here he plays a boxer who in his youth is svelte, very ripped, and in great shape. But by the end of the movie, and of course at the very beginning of the movie, he plays an aged Jake LaMotta who's gained a lot of weight. The movie is sort of about the career of Jake LaMotta. It's also sort of about his family, private life. I think even more so, it's about his personal, psychological, and spiritual life. I say that because, you know, the movie ends with a quote from the Bible, the Gospel of John, chapter 9, and peppered throughout are images of Catholic icons, which, of course, Scorsese always interlaces Catholicism, Christianity in general, into his movies. And you get this question, of why is this movie titled Raging Bull? Well, you see Jake Lamont in the movie have a relationship with his brother, Joey, his manager as well. Their relationship changes over the course of this movie and devolves. And that's the case with almost everything, actually everything about Jake LaMotta in this movie. At the beginning of the movie, he's arguing with his first wife. He finds a sexy blonde. He marries her, and their relationship devolves as well. Toward the middle to the ending of the movie, Jake LaMotta starts to believe that his second wife is cheating on him with just about everybody. Even though he's a tough boxer who can beat up just about anybody, he is very insecure. Now, a lack of security, a lack of trust, is really a lack of faith. In this movie, it's a lack of faith on Jake LaMotta's part and even the closest people around him, namely his brother and his wife. It's also a sign of a lack of faith in general and anything beyond oneself. I think that's what Scorsese is getting at with this portraiture of a famous American athlete who's representative of a whole swath of American culture. Not just athletes, but tough men, men who have some fame, men who even seek fame in America. You know, at this point in time in 2020, looking back at Scorsese's career, we've seen he's done this several times, including, for example, with The Wolf of Wall Street, which I think pairs pretty well with this movie Raging Bull. As this movie goes along, we see LaMotta's rise. He does become a boxing champion, but you know what? He's actually falling the entire movie. Now, what's this movie about? Why is it in black and white? Why does it feature boxing, but really this isn't really a sports movie? I want to think one of the things going on in this movie is a reaction to the very very popular late 1970s movie Rocky. Whether intentional or unintentional on Scorsese's part, you know, this movie really is a strong reaction to the simple triumphalism of Rocky, the rags to riches story that Rocky tells the man of faith, the sort of tough but simple-minded boxer who loves and becomes almost a champion. Raging Bull is quite a bit different. You know, Jake LaMotta is a character who's tortured and tormented in a lot of ways. Prone to violence, very prone to anger, prone to delusions, highly jealous. He's simple-minded, and that gets him in trouble a lot of times. The way this movie is a portrait of a man of lower intelligence, is that because of his natural abilities? Is that because he got hit in the head so many times? But nevertheless, this movie is one of the rare movies that talks about the plight and problems of people who are slightly less intelligent, perhaps, than average. Lamada is given to violence. He gets to work that out in the boxing ring, his bullish nature, of course, but in real life, it causes him all kinds of problems. For one thing, he's got an inferiority complex. Early in the movie, he talks about his small hands and how he'll never be great. By the end of the movie, you know, he's trying to do stand-up comedy in his older age when he's overweight, trying to gain attention. He's a failure at that. This movie basically says he's a failure at everything, even though he does become heavyweight champion for a time. It answers the question of, well, what would happen to Rocky if Rocky were to age 25 years? I know the Rocky franchise has answered that question after having five or six movies, but Raging Bull already beat it to the answer to that question. What does 
an athlete in his prime do after that athlete descends physically and becomes older and can't do what he is the best at, which is fighting in this case of Jake Ramada. There is a heavy, heavy, I think, spiritual dimension to this movie. I've hinted that there are icons all over the place, crosses in the bedrooms, and I think Scorsese is actually using, you know, Catholic doctrine and dogma in this movie. One of the signs is the title, Raging Bull. The image of the bull is really interesting, and let me use an older Italian poet, Dante, to describe it. In Dante's work in the Inferno, you know, the image of anger and violence, that's the middle portion of Inferno. Now, people in Dante's hell are stuck in circles, literal circles. The image of anger and violence for Dante, when he uses that, he mixes humanity and animality together. You get these sort of hybrid creatures like the Minotaur used in the middle of Dante's Inferno, to illustrate anger. For Dante, anger and violence is the will run amok. It's the perverted will without intellect that control it. And that's what you get in this movie. So this animalistic character, even a couple of times, two or three times, it's said in the movie outright that Jake LaMotta is an animal. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. You also get that sense with him in the ring. He wants to hit people. He also wants to be hit. He's a man stuck in a body and he wants to lash out at everything because maybe because of his simple mindedness, maybe because he knows or senses that he's devolving or dissolving. But anyway, this Dante Inferno hellish imagery comes up here. It answers the question why this movie might be in black and white. Not only is there a beauty to what's going on in the movie, a strange beauty to the madness in it, but also, you know, Dante's hell is colorless. It's got shades of gray, it's dark, it's dull, it's bleak looking. And while The Raging Bull isn't all that, it is beautiful cinematography. It also shows this man stuck in sort of a hellish world. And the image of rings or circles of the man, Jake LaMotta, being stuck in them comes up all over the place. Of course, there's the boxing ring. A, not a literal circle, but call the ring nevertheless. And in the boxing match sequences, you have this logo from this company Everlast that makes boxing gear. Scorsese highlights that word Everlast. Yeah, it's part of a company's name, so maybe it's meaningless. But you know, it's ironic. Boxing is not going to last forever. A fighter can't last forever. So Everlasting, maybe it's a hint of Jake LaMotta's decline and change over time in this movie. Maybe it's also a hint that there are hellish tones and associations with this movie. There's a couple times this movie where you see a ring of people around Jake LaMotta. He also puts himself on the stage, containing himself being surrounded again by a stage of sorts and an audience. There's a couple phone booth scenes as well, and then there's an amazing scene near the end where Jake LaMotta is in jail, and boy, he just punches the wall. His anger, his rage comes out. But that, my friends, that jail is a metaphorical hell, the bleakness, the darkness, and Jake LaMotta just raging inside his chamber. feels sorry for him because he's hard-headed. On the other hand, he lets his will run amok. He can't seem to control himself. He's a boxer his entire life. He can't leave the ring behind. You know, that's part of the problem announced by this movie is that when we have our vocations, it's hard to leave those behind and live a separate life at home. You know, when you're at work and you're working hard, you take it home with you, your work life, whatever it is. And then your work life invades your private life. A lot of us can't help that. And so Jake LaMotta lets this rage and anger that he needs for boxing to be a good boxer seep through into his entire life, into all of his relationships. I just want to ask you one thing. Why did you fuck Joey? Get away! Open the door. No. Why'd you do it, huh? Why'd you do it? I didn't do it! Why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? So Jake LaMotta is that kind of bull. He's a minotaur, half man, half beast who runs wild. He's a bull in the ring with a matador waiting to stick the sword in him. The scenes in this movie of violence, of chaos, both in the ring and in private life, are really hard for me to take. I find this movie entirely unpleasant. That's one reason why I think it's strange that it's up so high on all of these best of movie lists. This is a guy movie, but it's also criticizing a certain version of masculinity, a certain version of males and culture. 
you know, maybe it's saying these wild males need to go do something else besides being constrained and contained by social norms. But it's also demanding that these people like Jake LaMotta get their act together to get wisdom, to find faith, to find hope, and then to act on it in one's life. This is a real tour de force illustration of Scorsese's abilities. He uses all kinds of techniques and, and film tools here. I think one of the things, maybe the best thing about this movie, is the way, how it's about, what it's about, the style of this movie. Obviously, the boxing scenes are well known. They're very well constructed, amazingly well shot. Anybody who wants to make films, a video creator, ought to watch these to find inspiration. This movie also uses a lot of inner titles, some still photos, some color photography to showcase, you know, vintage camera work. Looks like home movie reels. And, you know, this movie, as I've hinted at, has classical allusions all over the place. Not just to American literature in general, which Scorsese loves. You know, there's so many great boxing, not just movies, but pieces of art and literature writing particularly Ernest Hemingway, the boxing scene in Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man, for example. But also this movie is in a strange way, and I think this is dead on, a comment on the very famous ancient Greek bronze sculpture, The Boxer at Rest. I've been in the museum in Rome where this, I think it's a copy actually of the bronze sculpture is. It's an amazing sculpture. And if you want to think about this boxer coming alive and what kind of life he lived, I think Raging Bull is sort of painting the picture of what it's like to be or would have been like to be that boxer at rest. You know, so many sports movies are just, well, sports movies. They're not about anything more than a team or an athlete winning, training to win, and then becoming a champion. That's probably one of the most cliched genres of all movies. But Raging Bull takes the shape of a sports movie, takes a figure who would be in a sports movie, and just makes it so complex, so interesting, so harrowing, so even hard to watch, hard to take, that this movie, Raging Bull, becomes a greater work of art because of all the extra complexity, all the layers added to the typical sports movie. Now, I myself, I'm just going to admit this. Personally speaking, this is probably my sixth or seventh favorite Scorsese movie. It's not just because this is so hard to watch. I actually find it hard to identify with the Jake LaMotta character. But I think that's also a flaw because, you know what, there's so many mirrors in this movie. There's so many moments where Scorsese, the camera in general, asked each viewer to try to figure out who Jake LaMotta is on the inside, empathize with him, and then do some self-reflecting on your part. Now that you've seen this Jake LaMotta character on screen, what does that tell you about yourself? That's really, really hard spiritual, psychological work. And I dare say almost everybody, including me, would like to avoid doing that sort of work. This movie is spot on in investigating the rage and intensity and violence inside people, perhaps mid to late 20th century American men in particular, and what kind of lives they lead as a result of that pent up rage and that desire not just to hit, but to be hit. Have you seen this movie? What do you think about it? Please leave us a comment and let us know how you've analyzed this movie. And if you haven't, please subscribe to this channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day.